Welcome to Senior Strategies. I am your host, Amy Decker, Director of Client Services for Senior Helpers. We are so glad that you were able to join us today for lively conversations with guests that can offer you the tools, strategies, and support so that you can successfully stay on your journey as a caregiver. We hope that you enjoy yourself and find just what you needed to get you through today. Hi, welcome to Senior Strategies. I have a very special guest today that really just fits the needs for so many seniors in our community right now. You know, we were talking in the day, you used to be able to go to one doctor and get all sorts of things done at that doctor's office and then go home. Um, now we're finding that there's multiple doctor's appointments that have to be met. And some of our seniors have a hard time standing and bearing weight, or they're in a wheelchair, or they have a walker. So it really compounds the scheduling to get the seniors to these doctor's appointments in a happy and healthy way to keep them safe. Um, so my guest today is Pam Charnin, and she is a mobile advanced Hi. registered nurse practitioner. And she is the answer to that dilemma, because she'll come to you. She'll come to your spouse. She'll come to your mother and father. She'll come to you. And so now we're going to introduce Pam and we're going to talk to Pam about who you are and what you do and how you got where you are right now. We're so happy to have you. Oh, thank you so much, Amy. I'm so happy to be here. I feel like this is such a great platform to uh, just give our viewers so many answers yes. to many problems that they have in, mm -hmm. in communities, especially when they don't live close by to their, um, you know, parents or, you know, they don't have anybody, anybody in the area to really Yeah, it's a huge challenge. On. It really yeah, is a huge really challenge. Is. And they don't know the resources available, especially if they live up in New York or up exactly. north somewhere. So I'm originally from New York. Mm -hmm. Most of my experience was in hospitals, acute care type of settings. Um, which really enabled me to be very confident in the in the patient's home because you are autonomous. I am by myself. So I really, I have to rely on my knowledge, my skills. So um, I've been in the business for about 20 years. Healthcare has certainly changed uh, dramatically through the years that I've been in practice. Um, I moved to Florida about three years ago after the, you know, COVID epidemic. I was on the front line with the pandemic um, so I decided to move to Florida and I wanted to be more autonomous and be able to go out into the communities and really meet the patients in their settings where they're right. comfortable. Mm -hmm. So I, um, started with a mobile practice. The name of the company is primary care solutions. We're all over the coast of of the East Coast of Florida. We start all the way up in uh, Vero Beach and we're all the way down to the Miami area. Great. We have multiple, multiple practitioners um, that go into private homes. We also go into um, independent living facilities and we're in assisted, in, in assisted living facilities as well as memory care units. That's great. So, it, it's geared, I am a family nurse practitioner, but I specialize in geriatric patients. Mm -hmm. So I really develop more of a relationship with the patient by, by visiting them in the home. Right. I really get to know them on a personal level. And like um, you said, that's where they're most comfortable. You'll probably exactly. find when you take their vitals, they're a little bit better than if they had to get in a car and come to an office and sit Absolutely. and wait. They're in the comforts of their own couch and you're there. So yes. they are happier. And I, and I get to understand the family dynamic as well. I always include the families. Um, not that every one of my patients has you know memory loss, but it, it's very difficult for them to... Uh, you know, understand what I'm saying. And it makes it so much easier if we could have a caregiver present or, you know, a family right. member. So of I always, course. I always involve the family, which yeah. is, you know, super important. So important. So, um, and you know, family dynamics it, really can be, um, I think that's a bigger challenge almost than dealing with the patient or the client is the family dynamics, especially if they've got a spouse and three adult children and all of them want to be on the same page, but none of them are right. agreeing with each other. So being so able true. to 
Oh, it just that in itself. I think that's mm-hmm. a full time job just in itself. So the fact that you're including them in on it, it gives them yeah. the knowledge and understanding of exactly what's going on coming from you as a professional. Yeah, I mean the in, the the client doesn't want to make any decisions without their families. Right. They want their families involved. Right. So, you know, that's like a key, a key piece uh, to developing the relationship. Uh-huh. You what know, is your biggest, the, what person. would you say is your biggest, um, the most often needed services that you provide? So I would say it depends. Like in a home, in a home setting, if they live by themselves, that's probably my biggest challenge. And I, and I see, and I see that they're, you know, uh, not able to get around the way that they used to. They're not able to, you know, do their medications the way that they used to be able to setting reminders for themselves. And there's so many, there's so many services out there that offer this private duty type of care. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, and then I always try to layer it with, um, you know, something that is paid for through their insurance, like a home care agency that could come in and give them some physical therapy or occupational therapy, Mm -hmm. you know, maybe, um, you know, do some education with them. So I would say that the biggest, you know, my biggest, um, fear is always falling, patient falling. Right. Because we do know that most accidents happen in the home. Yep. Especially in the bathroom. And a fall can affect, you know, they can break their hip. They can break their arm. Then they've got to go in for surgery. And now you've got the complications of putting them on anesthesia and what can happen with that. And a fall, so many children don't understand it. They'll say, yeah, my dad's, my dad's a fall risk. Could you just pop in like, like two hours a day? That's not going to keep him from falling. Exactly. He's an independent living. We're going to move him to assisted living. That's also not going to keep him from falling. Exactly. Fall just can, can, Mm -hmm. can spiral right down. And you know, that, that's the biggest reason why, you know, I love what I do because I could, I could actually go into the home and see what is needed in their actual to make it safe, Uh to make it safer you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and, and, and we don't want, I mean, you know, the, the worst thing I can do is have to send a patient to the hospital, right? Because we know that when they come out of the hospital, even if it's just for a few days, they're not the same person that they went in, in as, right. And that, and that's just, you know, aging, the aging process. Sure. And even if they've got memory issues or they've got cognitive issues, going to the uh, move of the trauma of going into the hospital and the heading home causes such confusion. It's almost like a snow globe flying around. It like takes a long time for that snow globe to, to wind down and, and they're back to themselves. And sometimes they never get back to themselves. That's it's so true. So what are, so from soup to nuts, Mm -hmm. somebody calls you Mm-hmm. And they, uh, they live in New York, but their, their father or mother lived down here and they need your services. What are things that you can do for them? So I can do everything that a primary doctor can do Okay. in an office, everything. And I feel that I could do more because I'm able to spend more time with the patient. Right. So I do everything from a head to toe assessment. Mm-hmm. We review all of their medications. Good. Um, I diagnose. Uh, I offer services such as blood draws can be done right in the home. Mm-hmm. X X-rays can be done in the home. EKGs can be done in the home. Echocardiograms. Um, any type of ultrasounds can also be done in the home. And then, of course, you know we layer in home care agencies to provide you know, physical therapy, occupational therapy. And then we also call in private care. Right. um, To get senior helpers. Like see, exactly. Like senior senior helpers. helpers. Exactly. Yeah. So that's what's nice is you have such a referral source. You can do pretty much everything. Mm -hmm. That what you can't do, you've got right at your fingertips to be able to get into the home. And then you've got the whole puzzle piece put together. You don't need, you're a one-stop shop basically for whatever Mm -hmm. that person and that's I mean, godsend. I think most people have no idea 
that there's such a service out there like what you do. It's it's so true. Mm -hmm. It's so true. I have new residents that go into, you know, independent living facilities mm -hmm. and I'll, I'll be at one patient. Someone will stop me and say, oh, what is it that you do? And they're like, oh my gosh, like I never, right. I never knew that these services were available. Right. So, and, and that is the biggest thing. In fact, um, you and I have a mutual client that she had just recently moved into an assisted living um, community. And she just has issues with her hips and her legs and she was in pain, but she just moved here from California and she didn't have a doctor and didn't know where to go and really didn't even have the, the wherewithal to find a doctor or get into a vehicle to go. Mm -hmm. And you were able to just put that entire worry that she had away. Cause you could exactly. go right there and take care of her immediately and even, and even take labs too. So her son living in California well, was thrilled to know that you could come in and take care of his mom and he didn't have to worry about her then. Exactly. And we were able to get her all the services that she needed, mm -hmm. including physical therapy with a aquatic therapist yeah. that actually goes into the pool with her and right. does all kinds of exercises. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so it was, it, it's awesome. You know, it I, is. I and it I is, mean, and I think you have you have mastered such a group of resources in the short time that you've been here. You've only been here three years, but yeah, yet you have. I mean, who often says I want physical therapy, but they got to take me in the swimming pool, and then you find them. It's, yeah, it's it's amazing. It is, and you it were is. able to find people that came to the house to for a massage, right? So it's it's right. you know, it takes a village. Could, it it does. Mm -hmm. It does. How did you, how did you start your journey with what you're doing? So when I lived in New York, um, even as a, as a nurse and a registered nurse, I always did home care on the side. Mm -hmm. So I was introduced like over 20 years ago to that type of setting. And I would go into, you know, these assisted living facilities and I would just do blood sugar testing on residents. And then I would administer insulin and from there, it just kind of grew. And then when I graduated with my, with my master's, I had a friend who actually started a, a home care business as a nurse practitioner. And I worked mm -hmm. for her while I worked in the hospital setting. Wow. And, and I just came to realize what an importance it is as our elders age. I mean, I would say... I would say 75, no, no kidding, 75 to 80, even 80% 80 of my patient population is over the age of 88. Oh, wow. I, I just came home today from taking care of a 101 year old. Wow. So, yeah, so we are really living is, longer. We really are. And we need, you know, these are the resources that we need. Right. It's a, str it's a struggle for anybody to take someone out to go to a yes. doctor's appointment. It really and is. That, and not only just to get to the doctor's appointment, but what about like sitting in the waiting room? Right. And, and what, what about, about if you're the wife of the 88 year old man and you're 88 yourself and now exactly. you are caring for your 88 year old husband, driving him to the, yeah, exactly. it's just, it's, it's difficult for the patient. It's difficult for the spouse. That's a lot. And, and then, and then you also have to look at the other, the flip side of that too, is, you know, especially in this area in, in Florida, you know, the the population has like exploded here. Right. And, and these doctors, these primary medical doctors, you can't get an appointment with someone months for months, months and months and months. Right. And now, and now the new thing is concierge. Right. So they're charging these astronomical fees mm -hmm. on top of, you know, billing Medicare right. and, and other insurance companies. Mm -hmm. To, just to take care of these people on, uh, you know, so you're increasing the fees, the fees right. to the, this elder population. It's so sad. It, it, it is. It's it so is. sad. It I is. know one and of the it, things that you and I talked about too, the other day, um, and I'm sure you probably saw this horribly true during COVID is we found so many of our seniors were terribly depressed, horribly oh. depressed locked in their rooms. They can see their terrible through a window. If they're Horrible. in a community, an assisted living independent community, they weren't eating with their friends. They they were locked in there. So I am it sure was... the psych portion of having to keep all of these in line oh. was, was constant. And you were yeah. able to get resources for that type of thing. Oh, depression. yes. I have, I have more than one psychiatrist that's available. I also have um, social workers 
and therapists that a group that come into facilities uh -huh. and, and see and see residents also and they love that they love that and, and you have huge. and you have numerous support groups that you do too right I do. So I have fabulous. three support groups that I hold in different um, areas, one in Delray, one in Boynton Beach, and one in um, Green Acres. And, and I'm telling you, just to have them sit around and talk about vomit out their story of their journey and whether they're depressed exactly. or they're angry or they're bitter. And so that's the caregiver that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. So imagine the caregiver harboring all of this, and then they have to go home and care for their spouse or their parent who's also depressed because exactly. that poor soul has lost their purpose completely. Mm -hmm. You know, you get up in the morning, you're like, what's my purpose today? Oh, let's see. I've got someone that's got to come in and give me a shower. I've got mm -hmm. someone that's going to help feed me. Well, there's no purpose left. So depression is huge. Oh, it, re it really is. And you know what? It, these people, they, they just want somebody to talk to. Yes. They want to be heard. So they want to be, they want to be heard. They want to be heard. And sometimes exactly. they don't want anybody really to talk to. They're not looking for communication. They want to be heard. Right. They want to just vomit it out. And for some reason, exactly. once they do that and cry or, or be able to sort their, they're thinking out loud at that point, then mm -hmm. they're able to kind of let go of some of that burden and think out loud and hear themselves say these things. And there's something very cathartic about that. Yeah. And I, and I feel too, you know, I have to plug my nurse practitioner license a little bit. I feel because I have that nurse background, that allows me to really look at the patient right. as like a whole human being. Right. And, and that's so important because, mm -hmm. you know, listen, God gave us two ears and one mouth right. and for a reason. Like, like you said, you know, people just want to be heard. Yeah. And they're, they're comfortable with me. Yeah. They feel like they can, you know, kind of vomit on me. Like you, right. you said, right. You know, and, but and you're also a good listener and you've also learned what the proper thing to say back to them, which has exactly. taken me some time too. There are certain things like people want, sometimes people listen to respond. They don't really listen to so hear. true. They're not hearing anything. They're waiting to respond. And right. so they're not even hearing what that person's saying because they're already trying to outdo whatever. So if someone's crying about their condition or where they are or caring for their spouse, the best thing you can do is listen and say, I can't imagine. Mm -hmm. Never say, mm -hmm. oh, I 100% understand what you're going through. No, you don't. No, exactly. you don't. Oh, been there, done that. And then they vomit out their story. It's like they just, people don't know, just listen. Just listen. Just listen to them. That's all they need. Yeah. They don't even need you to give them an answer. Just listen. And and when you are a good listener, you you learn so much, mm -hmm. you know, more than just kind of right. rattling off what you think they want to hear, which is it, never, right. it, it's never what they want to hear. No. So. Exactly. I don't so care true. what usually comes out of your mouth. It's not usually the right thing. It, exactly. it really is true, but it builds your compassion up for that person. Totally. And that's why they love you because now you're coming into their home and now you become a personal friend that's listening to them. Yeah. Well, that's only going to make them feel better. Their vitals are going to be better. Everything mm -hmm. about them is going to feel better. That's so and, important. And also, and also the frequency of the visits, you know, that's really important too. Um, depending on, you know, how many comorbidities or issues that are going on with the patient. I mean, my company sees patients every four weeks because when you're in your late eighties, nineties, you know, something can happen in an oh, instant, in, in an a day, instant, in a day, you know, just a urinary tract infection. Right. If you don't treat that like immediately, you know, that patient is off to the hospital. So, you and know, that you in itself, I think most people don't understand. That's another thing where some, I'll, I'll get a phone call from a, a spouse or a child and I'll say, God, my dad's just, I don't know. He's just acting strange. Um, mm -hmm. He's confused. He's combative. And it's exactly. just overnight. And I don't, or my mom, same thing. And I'll say, have they, have you checked for a UTI? And mm -hmm. they're like, oh no, my mom would know it would be burning. And she always, she got it. It's totally different in the senior. Most so, don't know so that. So different. Yeah. Most don't know that. E even like pain. There's so many, there's so many different thresholds for the elderly than 
in someone who's in their 30s, 40s, or even 50s. Right. It's completely, completely different. And it can change so quickly. So that's it why can. to really have that um, that ability to be able to go and see them, mm -hmm. you know, monthly is, right. is crucial. Right. And and that gives and that gives the the caregivers and the family and everyone like peace of mind. Like, yes. oh wow, like you know, they're gonna see you they're know gonna they're gonna follow see up the NP today and yeah, right, and they're and gonna they're let gonna me know up. everything. Yeah. Right. One of the things I learned um, in, I took the Tipa Snow Gems course, so I'm certified in teaching that night. So I teach that to our caregivers through That's senior great. helpers. But one of the things they said is with dementia or any kind of cognitive issue, your brain rewires itself differently. Mm -hmm. So, so the most sensitive parts of your body are your lips, mouth, and tongues, palms of the hands, fingertips, bottoms of your feet and genital area. So they can bash their back. They can cut their arm. They and can whack it on a wheelchair and it'll be bleeding all over the floor. And they're not feeling exactly, it exactly. because their brain is totally rewired differently. Mm -hmm. And something like that, they might not even realize, oh my goodness, I, I cut my arm. I cut my leg. It's lips, mouth, and tongue, hands, feet, and general area. And so many of our tasks when we're caring for our loved one includes that feeding them, changing their diaper, giving them a shower. Exactly. As the age, like you said, their, their threshold of pain and how things happen just it's so different. I had, I had a gentleman uh, a couple of days ago. He um, had, he broke his hip. He fell. He had a subdural hematoma was in a hospital, then went to a rehab for a really long time, came back to the assisted living facility after like two and a half months. Wow. And um, I did labs and I saw that his kidney function wasn't good. And I went to go see him. I was like palpating his like, you know, pelvic area. And he was like, oh no, does that, that doesn't hurt. And I was like, you know what? Something's telling me like he's retaining urine. Oh. So I was able to call a home care agency. I got someone there immediately to straight catheterize him. Wow. And he, he had over a thousand mLs of urine in his bladder. Oh my so I goodness. Said, I said, thank God. Like I, I, I know my stuff because no, well, what could I, have happened? Had you not found that, what could have happened? Oh, he, he could have went into complete kidney, kidney failure, failure. I mean, your bladder doesn't Complete. burst, does it? Would your bladder burst? No, but what what will happen is your kidneys will shut down oh, because there's the there's, you know there's the kidneys no and the ureters oh. and right. Oh my goodness! So I said, thank God that I you know knew to look I, and for I, that, and, and I was able to act so quickly. You know, it literally I called the home care agency was out at the patient's facility within like three hours. Wow. So, you so know, you we, we can life, get probably. things. Yeah. I, I mean, I get, I guess in a sense yeah. I, I did, I don't like to, but, but it, you it's should, just, it, but that's yeah. the importance of what you do. And I think that's the, right. one of the biggest reasons I wanted to get you on this program is I think so many people don't realize that there are resources like you out there Yeah, that, and it's that they can need, call you. And if they wanted to call exactly. you, how would they get a hold of you? What's the number? So they would just call my my agency, which is Primary Care Solutions, and the number is 772-480-5860. And they can ask for the intake department. Mm -hmm. And it's just as simple as filling out like two pieces of paper and they put them on, you know, someone's schedule and mm -hmm. bam, within 24 hours to 48 hours, we're Somebody's seeing the there. patient. And what insurances do you take? So we take um, straight Medicare and we take all other plans, which are PPOs. Okay. PPO plans like United Healthcare, Humana, Aetna, Cigna. Um, gosh, there's, there's so many. Okay. So all the P PPO plans. Okay. Good. Day, um, day. Yeah. Good and and we work with families too. You know, if, if there's a, if there's a financial situation, you know, hindrance or mm -hmm. a large co-payment, I mean, we do look at each individual case. That's great. Um, so the, the owner of the company who is Melissa Garitano, she's, she's really good. She's like good. amazing. Good. So, 
Yeah. Well, what you do is amazing. And I think that oh, thank um, you. there's just so much that so much good that you do for our community. And like you said, there's yeah. only one you right now. So, you know, right. you probably take days where you're just running around like a crazy woman, but, yeah. but what you're doing is, is such a wonderful thing. And it's so paying it forward to our seniors that really deserve to have somebody like you to come into their home and, and, that I, and I love, know them. and I love what I do. Yeah. And you can tell I'm very passionate about what I do. That's wonderful. So, yeah. And you have to be in this industry for what you do. You have to be when you're dealing with, you've got to have compassion and you've got to have empathy. You, and it's really very do. difficult to teach people that. And you and I both have so worked true. With people that don't have that. They're right. in it for a paycheck. They're in it for a paycheck. Really? Yeah. You can't it's, do that. That's very true. Yeah. Sad. sad. It is sad. sad, but true. Yeah. You know? But I think so, you're great. And I think what you do is wonderful. Oh, and I hope that um, for all of the viewers out there and listeners, that if you have any questions or concerns or something that Dr. Pam can help, um, help you with, you can leave messages on um, the, the Facebook page, Instagram page. Um, you can also reach out to Pam with the number that she gave you um, to set up an appointment. And it can be for you. It can be for your loved one um, or your family member that lives in another state. If they're down here and you live someplace else, we'd love to help you. So thank you for being on the show, Pam. Oh, thank you so much, Amy. You were great. And I we really look forward to giving you lots it. and lots and lots of business. Thank you. Thank you. To all the viewers too. Thank you for watching our show. We hope that you found an answer to a question or a resource that can assist you. Our goal is to keep all of you that are caregivers informed, refreshed, and heard. We're here for you. Please don't hesitate to reach out to us with any questions. We have all the resources that you'll need. Please follow us on our Facebook and Instagram pages for the up and coming shows and events and support groups. Thank you for joining us and thank you for your support.